Hey everybody, welcome back to Road to Pro. Today we're going to be going over how to shoot a pull shot. It's what I shoot personally. Um, I've shot a rollover in tournament, but the pull shot's what I always kind of go back to and is my home. I personally think it's probably one of the harder shots to truly learn and execute well at a high tournament level, but again, it's what I shoot best and it's what I can teach you easy. Um, there's some very specific things that you have to learn when it comes to shooting a pull shot, and we're going to jump right into that today. We're going to start off with how to specifically hold the rod, how to hold it correctly so you can actually execute the shot, the stance, and then some different training and uh, practice things to use, uh, and some drills so uh, you guys can become even better at shooting it and learning how to shoot it correctly. Let's jump right so into it. So first and foremost, it has to do with the grip. Um, the best way of kind of explaining how the grip works and the way I hold a grip is by setting the rod straight up and down so the guys are straight up and down. Then take the flat part of your hand and make sure it lays basically across the top of the rod. You can be a little bit over but pretty much flat on top. I take my pointer finger and actually put it over the top here of where the rod and the metal are. So that's kind of like that. Now, <clears throat> once you have that, it's kind of angled, as you can see. So it's flat on top, but your arm is angled backwards. I then position my stomach and my belly button so it's directly in front of the five rod. I put my right foot back just a little bit. So this allows for you to get the little bit of snap that's needed to execute a pull shot correctly. Um, when it comes to shooting a pull shot, there's a lot of neat tricks, but this is step one, is getting the appropriate grip on the hand and on the rod so that you can execute it correctly. All right, now that I've explained <clears throat> the grip and the stance where your, foot, your right foot is back, uh, you'll find that it's directly behind your body so that you're allowed to open your body up. It all comes down to how do you get the actual power and how do you get the actual execution. Um, I see a lot of beginners and rookies making the mistake of this big wind up to try and hit a ball. But that's not where you get any of the power. That big wind up really means nothing. All the power that you get from an actual pull shot, and I can best describe it from the two rod, <laughs> is actually generated from directly on top of the ball. Okay, so when I'm talking about right above the ball, and you can see it from that angle, is that you don't even need to wind up at all to hit the ball. All the power comes from right there. If you can learn to hit it, from right there, you can literally generate all the power and the speed that you need to hit the ball correctly. Now I know that that really almost makes no sense. Why would you want no wind up on a ball? You feel like you get more power when you do all this big heavy backswing. Well, there's a couple things to it that do make sense. One, when you make a big up backswing, it gives a tell. It allows great players to see where you're hitting the ball. It allows them to jump in front and beat you to the hole because there's all that extra motion. Two, you really don't get the right amount of power. Um, there's a friction that comes from when the ball is a little bit behind the rod and it's being squeezed out. Um, when you get that kind of like pressure, it pops out for you and is gonna actually put more torque on the ball and you're gonna hit it much, much harder. So now that you have your hand in the right position, your body in the right position, the basic mechanics. So you're gonna want your elbow down. You're gonna pull the ball very quickly, and at the last second, jump behind it, hit it, and cut back to the wall. Um, now, there's a lot of people that'll probably disagree with me on how to shoot a pull shot. There's a million ways to shoot a pull shot correctly. This is my way of doing it. Um, the reason you cut back on the ball 
and you go back towards the wall is so that it straightens out. So <clears throat> when you're pulling the ball, inertia is going to keep everything coming this direction. That's why when you shoot most shots, you see that they slant towards this way, like across the table when you're doing a pull shot. When you cut back across the ball, when you're hitting it, it straightens it back out and does what's called a seven stroke or you know, a tuck, something along those lines. It allows for you to hit really small holes and cut in. So, it wasn't even a hole there, but <clears throat> you get the idea. Now when it's done, it should kind of look like that. You get to go back to the wall after you hit it. That's the premise. Um, you're gonna need to be able to shoot all three holes. You have to be able to go straight, middle, and long. Uh, I personally think that you have to have a really good tuck two hole. And it to me is a much jerkier, harder back cut or cut back than the long. Uh, the long is a much deeper stroke, but it still cuts back heavy. Now, a lot of people I've seen do a straight wrong. What they do is when they come down on the ball, they still try and cut back. They end up hitting the wall. The correct way to shoot a straight is actually going the opposite direction. You want to end up on this wall for the most part. It does two things. First and foremost, this motion here makes people think you're pulling the ball. Then, when you actually do hit the ball and keep going, people have a tendency to go with the rod. Um, you'll see it a lot of times when people are tic-tacking a ball back and forth, when they're going back and forth, they follow the ball. It's the same concept. People are, have it trained in their minds to truly follow the ball wherever it goes. And if you make that kind of motion, they tend to jump with it. Um, now, varying up the speed can really throw people off. They'll start diving out there, especially if you have a good long. I think it's really important for repetition. Shooting a pull shot takes lots and lots of practice, lots and lots of repetition, something that you're really going to have to ingrain in yourself. Uh, one great way of practicing it is by pulling it slow, hitting it, cutting back, until you can learn to keep doing it faster and faster and faster and faster. Uh, I over-dramatize it when I shoot slow, when it's quick. My motion is a lot easier because I've been doing it for so long. But for at first, just practice that little bit of motion. You want to make the guy end up on that wall, basically where you started, and cut back on the ball whenever you shoot. If you don't have, you have to have all three choices, the long, the middle, and the straight, to have a truly effective pull shot. I see so many people not practice the straight because they're like, oh, I can hit the ball straight. I'm telling you right now, unless you practice hitting a good straight, you're not gonna have a good straight. It's a totally different motion than what you've been practicing for a middle and a long. Very, very, very important. Um, now, when it comes to picking holes, once you have this down, you can shoot all three. Um, I would suggest practicing your long probably the most. It's going to be the most important shot of a pull shot. If you don't have a good long, people are just going to sit over here and race you all day. You've got to practice getting faster and faster. Um, the best advice I was ever given is to jerk the rod. Um, I'm not saying to not be smooth, there's something very important to being smooth, but to try and learn the motion, you want to try and go as fast as you can. It's going to let you learn how to misexecute and why it misexecutes. If you're pulling the ball and it's constantly going back that way, if I can try and screw this up, if you always find the ball going that way when you try and hit it, it means you're swinging too soon. If you're constantly Hitting the wall, it means you're swinging too late or you're not cutting back across the ball enough to where it can straighten out. Those, the whole motion of a pull shot is very, very important and the grip 
is probably one of the most important things. If your grip is wrong, you say you're too high, you can't get behind the ball quick enough, and you follow through too much. <clears throat> when you follow through correctly, there should be almost, and you do the shot correctly, you should be directly behind the ball when you hit it, and you should end just about there. The reason is twofold. It gets you in a really good habit, because if you're shooting from the two rod with a pull shot, then you hit the ball, you're already back in position. Okay? You're not going to get stuffed as easily. And two, it takes away the tell. No big upswing, no big follow through. You're always in the correct position. Um, I think at first you also want to practice setting the ball up. It's really important. Um, and you want to find the sweet spot for you. Um, on my table, I personally think it's right on the line uh, with the dots. Uh, where I play locally, <clears throat> the ball has to be almost right underneath the rock. Or I just stub on that. Um, and it's something you're going to want to practice. So you're going to want to learn to shoot with the ball here, 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 here. Um, and in, I even have some like marble foosballs in my bin that you'll see here in a minute where I can have way back here and actually still hit it. Um, yeah, which I can't even pull the ball with this one. But you get the concept. The reason is you never know what conditions you're going to be playing on. If you're going to like your local bar and the table's pretty bad, um, you know, a lot of good players won't be able to shoot a rollover on that table because the rod's too stiff, they can't even get a, a good rock going. So having a quality basic game with a pull shot is going to allow you to walk into any foosball bar, any place, and play. That's one of the things that I really want to get taught to everyone. We're going to go with that. Um, one thing I'm going to tell everybody is so you can go into anywhere and play foosball with whoever is their local best player. Um, and a pull shot, a good one, will let you do that. Now let's talk about a few drills to practice this correctly. And for this, I'm going to bring out my good friend, this giant box of foosballs. Currently, we have exactly 95 balls in this bin. And as you can see, I literally have a ton of different colors, different shapes. I have two different marble balls. I mean, how many ball, different types can we even find in here? Tons. The reason is twofold. Um, one, I've been playing so long that I've collected foosballs from every generation that they've had, um, and I don't see any reason to throw foosballs away. Um, they are one of the best practice tools you can imagine, especially when you have a box of this many. What it allows you to do is sit down on your table, shoot a box of, say, 95, 50, and really start to what I like to consider quality practice. Um, high volume repetition is really what separates a decent player from a great player. This is one of those things you can't cheat. I can't say, hey, this is how you do it. You're just going to be great at it. This is something you have to sit down and practice. Um, when I first started playing, I would shoot almost, I think it was about 2,000 a week. Um, until my arm hurt is really the bottom line. Uh, just because I wanted to become a great foosball player. Never really got there, but hey, I got good enough to where I can show you guys a couple tips and tricks. Um, every type of ball that's in here and the different diversity of it, again, goes back to that walk into any bar at any time and play anybody on just about whatever crappy table they may have. Because um, foosball at the end of the day is supposed to be fun. Now, something I would highly suggest when it comes to practicing a pull shot over and over and over again, set up the guys just like this. So the two bar is just over the middle of the big dot. This is going to give you, you know, a few inch long, which isn't by any means a small or large hole. Um, I would say it's probably pretty large in comparison uh, to what most people will give you, but it's a great practice point. 
And what I want you to do for this drill is have as many foosballs as you can. If you just have to reach in and keep hand setting it, keep hand setting it. But I want you to hand set each ball and go through as many as you can, as quick as you can. The reason for that, and the reason I preach it, is because the quicker you can hand set it and just keep going through them, the quicker you're going to be able to learn. Uh, I once had a basketball coach that said, if you can learn to do something 55 times in a row, you've mastered it and you can keep, and you can do it whenever you want, however you want. Now, I don't know if that's true or false, but at the end of the day, it made a very solid point. And it was repetition and practice will get you to where you need to be. And doing that with whatever crappy balls you can get your hand on um, and going through a ton of repetition is what's going to set you apart from just being a beginner or a rookie that only plays with one great ball. Um, I'm not saying don't get a new ball. I've got those right here. Um, because when it comes to practicing for a tournament, you're going to want to break these out and practice on these until you're ready for this ball on this table, on that tour, wherever you're going. At the, you're still going to have what I like to call tournament table issues. Uh, no two tables feel the same. I mean, you can go to any bar, play on five different tables. Every table feels totally different to me every single time. The surfaces feel different. The balls are different. The men, the rods, the bearings. It doesn't matter. You want to be able to be proficient on whatever you're given so that you can play regardless, you know? <clears throat> and I think those are going to be very helpful things for you. Um, after you've done that a bunch of times, you've gone through the box and you're like, all right, I've got a pretty decent pull shot now. Well, what I've taught you to do is called quick shoot. Um, you shoot really fast after the ball's being set. After a while, you're going to want to let the ball sit there. 10, 15, even actually practice sitting for 20, 25 seconds because otherwise you're going to mis-execute. Because your body gets so used to the quick pull shot, it's not used to sitting there, relax, so that you can then snap one off. Um, when you get to a real high level, you're going to find that people that are really good and pros are just going to sit there and wait and wait and wait, and then snap one off. Um, I've never been known for that, I'm not gonna lie. Never been known to sit there and drive people crazy, but the purpose of it is so that you can. So your body gets used to sitting on that ball for 10, 15, 20, 25 seconds, and then exploding to the hole. Bang! That's what you wanna be able to do in the long run. Um, there's some other tricks when it comes to on the two, um, but I really am just gonna focus on the three rod today. Uh, I think that if you practice that enough and really work on that enough, you'll find all the bits and pieces. And you're gonna wanna do this going long, going short, going straight. You're gonna wanna shoot boxes and boxes, so to speak, of each hole. Um, if I was to practice a middle, I would set this guy where there's about that much of the ball, this guy just about a little over middle, and angle them in and so this guy would be angled back, this guy would be angled forward. Um, the reason for that is it makes the middle even harder to hit. Not many people are going to give you that kind of defense, but it gives you the concept of practicing for that tuck middle. So you practice shooting at it over and over and over again so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching guys. With hopefully those little tricks, uh, the right stance, the right grip, you too can learn to shoot a pull shot. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching the video. If you do like the video, you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. Uh, it allows me to make even more videos knowing that people do want to watch them and learn to get better at foosball. So that'll be it for this episode of Road to Pro. Uh, really hope you like it. Again, please hit the subscribe button, hit the likes. Um, so we know to keep making more and more content for you guys. Until next time, guys, happy foozing.